But ultimately, it's like I've been saying for a while now. The reason is because it's not about health, it's not about safety, it's about control and fear. They want you to be afraid, they want you to be dependent upon the government, they want you to believe in them to keep them safe, to keep you safe. And that is why they continue down this road even though all of the data points in the opposite direction. Because at the end of the day, people like Mayor Reed and Mayor Woodfin are science deniers. Hey fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. In response to all of this and the fact that we are no longer under an unconstitutional mask mandate that at the state level, which I maintained, and, and you can go watch my rationale, and I actually look through the letter of the law and look through the wording of the mandate, uh, you can see me debunk all that in a video that I did about a year ago, um, feels like, may, maybe more like eight months, but when KIV originally put the mandate into place in July of last year, you can actually see my video on that explaining why it's unconstitutional, so be sure to check that out at Tactics Radio on my YouTube channel if you want to watch that. We're not going to go over that now, but it was an unconstitutional order. But in response to this, in response to the mask mandate being repealed, Mayors Reed and Woodfin, the mayor of the city of Montgomery and the mayor of Birmingham, and I believe that there are other mayors, I just didn't see the news for it, because, I mean, I live in Montgomery and Birmingham's just right up the road. But... Those, the mayor of those two cities already announced that they will be enacting their own localized mask mandate. Now, here's the thing. Do I think it's stupid? Yes, I do. Do I think that the mask mandate is pointless because it does nothing? Yes, I absolutely do. Now, whether or not the masks themselves work, there is a little bit of science that suggests they might, but the science overwhelmingly suggests that there is zero chance of the mask mandate working. Every single time we've compared numbers, it comes back exactly the same. We'll go over that in just a second. But my point in all of that is, do I think that the mask work? Probably not. Do I think that the mask mandates work? Absolutely 100% do not work. But the one thing that I will say in the positive of Mayors Woodfin and Reed, even though I think they shouldn't have done this, is this is the way it was supposed to work from the beginning. Governor Ivey's mask mandate was unconstitutional, and it was wrong. Even if it hadn't been unconstitutional, it was wrong for her to put a statewide mask mandate on communities, some of which are very densely populated, at least by Alabama standards, like the cities of Birmingham and Huntsville and Mobile, and have that same mandate apply to slap out. And, you know, Weoka and, and uh, some of the other just tiny little dots on a map, it made no sense to have a blanket order for communities that were so radically different. And that's the reason that I'm not just a libertarian on the issues when it comes to, uh, when it comes to, you know, favoring liberty. I'm also a federalist in the sense that I think that government business should be handled at the lowest level possible. Now, some things the local level can't do. And so they have to kick it, to kick that bucket up the uh, up to the state level or, or, you know, maybe to the national level on some issues. I understand that. But generally speaking, matters should always be handled on the lowest level possible because that tends to be where people are both the most accountable and the measures are the most effective and make the most sense for that community. Putting a blanket order on a city like Montgomery and have that also apply to uh, Marbury, Alabama and Deetsville that doesn't make any sense because they're wildly different communities. And so as much as I dislike the fact that Mayor Woodfin and Mayor Reed put these into place, this is the way it was supposed to happen from the beginning. It should have been the mayors making these decisions from the start. And am I perturbed by the fact that my mayor is a moron and probably would have had one in place all this time anyway and, and actually continues to have one even after the statewide mandate expired? Yeah, I'm pretty upset about that. I'm, I'm not happy about Mayor Reed doing that. And by the way, I even invited him on the show, and I would have been fair, and I, and I told him that, that I was going to give him an interview. I was going to give him as much time as he wanted to explain all of this. Never got a call back. But what's funny about Mayor Reed's orders, and I did go through it, the requirements are that you must wear a mask if you cannot distance yourself more than six feet from other people that are not of your household. 
which is funny on a number of levels, because remember that this order has only been in effect for a little less than a week. And the CDC, nearly a month ago, said that the six feet thing was completely arbitrary, which we said from the beginning, and really three feet is probably fine. I mean, Dr. Fauci himself actually suggested this. Now, granted, Dr. Fauci said a thousand different things on whether or not that works, but m my point is the new guidelines actually say three feet apart. Mayor Reed went with six feet anyway for no apparent reason other than he wanted to. Uh, it is a completely arbitrary number. Three feet is a completely arbitrary number, but my point is he's not even keeping up to date with his own people on his side that would be, you know, presenting it that way, and he's still going with the one that is more obtrusive. Also, he said that masks are not required when eating, which, by the way, obviously you have to take the mask off when eating. I'm not advocating for the mask not making an exception here, just saying that I love how you're in like this magical force field of once you're eating, you're no longer at risk of transmitting the virus. Look, you're either at risk of transmitting the virus or you're not. We can't say, well, you're not at risk of transmitting the virus as long as you're wearing a mask. But if you're eating, there's an exception where all of a sudden it's really not that dangerous. It's either dangerous or it's not dangerous. And, and this is one of the reasons that I've said that from the beginning, this whole mask mandate is absurd is that it makes a whole bunch of provisions that don't make sense. Uh, they put barriers between the booths and, and restaurants. I mean, you, even uh, institutions that I like, restaurants that I like have done this, and I'm just looking at it like, right, because the virus, you know, it's not like it's airborne or anything and can float over the barriers. <laughs> Some of the measures that they've done have just been completely absurd. But another thing that was the most striking to me out of everything in the mayor's mask order, and this has been true for mask ordinances all over the country. So I'm not just picking on Mayor Reed, though, even though I am. I'm picking on uh, lawmakers at large that continue to have a mask mandate in place. There is no exception for someone that has either already had the virus or somebody that has been vaccinated. And that doesn't make any sense. Why would that not be the case? If we believe that the vaccines work, and by the way, I believe that they do work. This is not me making an anti-vaxxer stance. I'm saying that the vaccines do work. They're the ones that obviously do not believe that they work, because if they did, they would not require people that have been vaccinated to have a mask on. That's the point of getting vaccinated, is that the point of vaccines is you're no longer at risk to get the disease. That's the point of a vaccine. I'm the one that's saying, yes, I believe in the vaccine. I think that it probably works. The studies have shown that you have anywhere, depending on which vaccine you're taking, anywhere from an 80% to a 95% chance of not getting the virus. And therefore, it, it has a great mitigation of your risk and greatly lowers the chances of you getting severely sick if you do happen to get the virus. Ergo, if you've gotten the vaccine, you ought to be taking your mask off. And by the way, if they want to incentivize people to take the vaccine, that is the number one thing that they can do is say, hey, once you've got the vaccine, you don't have to worry about the mask anymore. But nobody on that side does it. Nobody on the left is saying that. And I can't for the life of me understand why, because that is the number one thing to motivate people to take the vaccine if that is your intended goal. See, the problem is that is not their intended goal. It's about power and being able to control people. It is not about keeping people healthy or mitigating their risk. Same thing with people that have already had the virus. If you've already had it, the risk is extremely low. When we're looking at people that have been reinfected, we're talking about numbers in the double digits in a country of 327 million people. I mean, the, the danger of getting reinfected is extremely low. And of the people that did get reinfected, their second round with this thing was incredibly mild because they already had a, a great deal of immunity built up from the first time. And so the risk for that is extremely low. And yet we continue to pretend like the mask is somehow far more important than natural immunity or vaccinated immunity. But here's the thing. The mask don't work. They've never worked. All of the data has shown us that the mask mandates for sure don't work. Again, th there's been some lab studies that people wearing certain masks in 95s in a certain way, people that have professional PPE training that understand how to wear a mask property, uh, properly, we can replicate that with people 
in labs. We can do that, which means there is potential that they could help outside if they're wearing the mask properly and they're wearing the proper kind of mask. There's been no studies done on these cloth masks that those things are actually workable in a real life situation with somebody that doesn't actually know how to properly wear a mask. However, we know for a fact, even though there is some science that suggests the mask might have some effectiveness, we know for a fact the mask mandates have zero effectiveness. We know that for a fact because we've seen it play out over and over again. And to prove my point, I'm not even going to use old data that I've already used. I'm going to show you some new stuff. So you can see this right here. This is a current map. I took this today, and it looks at the past 60 days of COVID hotspots in the United States. This is from the Mayo Clinic. You notice anything about all of the states that are dark red? the ones that have the closest to 100 per 100,000 people on average daily cases, it's uh, Minnesota and Michigan and Illinois and Pennsylvania and New York and Massachusetts and, huh, that's weird. It's a bunch of states that currently have mask mandates. Now, the only one I see on there that is bright red that... Has, does not have a mask mandate right now is Florida. And, you know, Florida is experiencing a bump in cases, but the overwhelming majority of your average daily ca cases there have come from states that currently have mask mandates. And Florida is not even a great example just because it has, I believe, the fourth or fifth oldest population of elderly in the United States, which are by far the most vulnerable to the disease. And the other states that have a older, uh, an, an older population than them are states like Rhode Island that have extremely small populations. And so as far as the big states go, it has way more old people than any of the other big states. And yet despite this, what we're looking at is Florida is about middle of the pack on average daily cases over the past 60 days. And all the other states that are in the red right there, all of them have mass mandates. To further prove this point, Let's look at the ones from today. This is, again, from the Mayo Clinic. You can see these are daily cases per 100,000 people. So, again, adjusted for population, and it's pretty much the same map. I mean, it's blue instead of red, but all the really, really dark blue places, all of them are places that currently, right now, have mask mandates. If the mask mandates worked, that would not be the case. And... I don't know how else to put it. It's just that simple. The data does not back up the claim that mask mandates have any effectiveness whatsoever. And if we were going to look at the real measure, the, the most important measure, because I've always said, I'm not saying that cases and, and testing and hospitalizations are a useless measure because those are good in certain situations and it's good that we know those things. But what's far more important is the death rate because that's how we should be measuring whether or not we're doing something actually good or effective, right? Because the ultimate goal is keeping people alive. And so looking at the death rate adjusted for population, we get a pretty good sense of this. And so let's go ahead and look at the states that have the highest deaths per capita related to COVID. You can see there, and I'm not going to read them all off, but uh, New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Mississippi, you, you, see, you get the idea. Those are the ones with the highest per capita. Now, I want you to see exactly the same map, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of the states that currently have a mask mandate in place in red. Huh. Would you look at that? One, two, three, and four. All of the top four states with the highest deaths per capita have mask mandates to this day. And then after that, you've got Connecticut at number 7, Pennsylvania at number 11, New Mexico at 14, Illinois at 15, and Michigan at 20. Now remember, about half the states have gotten rid of their mask mandates. And yet we have 9 out of the top 20, so about half. About half. So, in other words, it seems that there is no correlation whatsoever with a lower death rate and mask mandates. Isn't that interesting? It's almost as though the mask mandates, as I have been saying for months now, do not work. They have no effect on whether or not the you, you have higher case rates or uh, deaths. But ultimately, it's like I've been saying for a while now. 
The reason is because it's not about health, it's not about safety, it's about control and fear. They want you to be afraid, they want you to be dependent upon the government, they want you to believe in them to keep them safe, to keep you safe. And that is why they continue down this road even though all of the data points in the opposite direction. Because at the end of the day, people like Mayor Reed and Mayor Woodfin are science deniers. They can see the science, they can see that the vaccine protects you and say, well, we've still got to have masks. They can see that natural immunity protects you and they say, but we've still got to have masks for those people. They can see that the mask mandates do nothing effective at all. They say, but we've still got to do it. I mean, it just makes sense to be on the safe side, right? Well, I actually got into a debate with somebody earlier this week and they said, well, yeah, but the mask mandates are better than nothing. I literally just compared it to nothing. That, that was the literal control, nothing, no mask mandate. I compared it to nothing, and the results were in that nothing had exactly the same results as a mask mandate. And so this idea, what's well, better than nothing, um, no, it's actually not. I just compared it to nothing. And so uh, it, it just it does not make sense to continue down this road. None of this makes any sense. <laughs> If you're watching this because you liked this video, awesome. Be sure to like and subscribe and click that little notification bell. If you're a leftist that's only here to hate watch, hang on before you punch that dislike button. You see, I identify as a Hispanic woman, so if you dislike this video, that's literally violence against me and you are now guilty of a hate crime. Why do you hate beautiful trans people of color like me? What you gonna do now, Woke Brigade?